What is going on, Alpha Males? Welcome to the Alpha Male Podcast. The podcast where we talk about what it means to be a man the right way, strong, made in the image of God, and don't apologize, making godly men strong, and making strong men godly. So, Alpha Males. Today, I'm trying something a little bit different, trying to grow the business in different ways, and I've been trying to give the patrons quite a bit of bang for their buck. I don't know if I will continue in the weeks ahead, but in the weeks prior, for several weeks, I've been uploading, I think, four videos for the patrons. Shooting drills, training drills, basic shooting drills, faster ways to fix malfunctions, flashlight techniques, ground fighting techniques with a handgun... El Presidente, all number of things for the patrons. Because they do a lot for this podcast, and they do a lot for you guys, because it's by God's grace, they support this podcast. That is my number one source of income. Anyway, I try to give them quite a bit of content, in addition to our inside tribal chat, where they don't just get to ask me questions, which they do, but they get to talk to each other. And there's a lot of experts and a lot of things in that group. I mean, I'm humbled... And blessed to be a part of it. Anyway, this is on the Patreon page, but it's open to everybody. This is the audio version of a video I did about what's inside the baby bob. The baby bug out bag. The bail out bag if you want a more tactical name. But a small mobile kit that you can grab and go and bail out of your vehicle. Or put in your wife's car when you're going out to dinner. Or any number of things. Going to the gym and putting it in the locker. Locking up in a hotel safe. Or or whatever you want to do. It's a small highly mobile bag. And in this episode, I go through the contents. Now, I did this as a video and an audio simultaneously. I'm trying new things. Maybe this is not good. If it isn't, then let me know. If you want to watch the video instead, you're not driving or whatever, and you can dedicate to watch a video, you can go to the Patreon page. It is on Patreon, but you don't have to be a patron to watch it. It should be open to the public via Patreon. Hopefully, you'll go there and check it out if you don't want to just listen to the audio. Hopefully you'll consider for the fraction of the cost of a box of ammo or probably that next shiny thing you're going to order on Amazon and likely forget about. You'll consider valuing this content and becoming a patron. And if not, no worries. Again, if you want to watch the video of this audio, Patreon, there'll be, or there should be, a link in the show notes. Or you can just type in, go to Patreon and type in Good Shepherd Training. There's also a couple of other things on there that are for everybody to watch, not just patrons. So if you think it's worth it, go and check that out. With that, I'm going to put in the audio. It's me going through the baby bug out bag that I've refined over years and years and years of using it in real world situations. Anyway, with that, without further ado, I'm going to plug in that audio. Hello and welcome to Good Shepherd Training. If you're familiar with the podcast, Alpha Male Podcast, Gunfighter Life, you'll know that I'm big on the concept of the baby bug out bag. Probably not the most tactical concept, but baby bug out bag, bailout bag, whatever you want to call it. And it's kind of a modular system. The idea of it is a grab and go kit that you can have with you. Not as part of your EDC, it doesn't take away the EDC. Uh, That's a part of a system, but EDC, baby bug out bag, and then my big bug out bag, which is here, and then my go-to long gun, in addition to the one that is inside my big bug out bag, and also the war belt. Done episodes on those in the past. Anyway, I thought it would be cool to go through a visualization, as most of you guys that listen to the podcast only ever get the audio, so I'd go through and show you things as I go through the baby bug out bag so here we go this is the part one i said this is modular so this i take when i go into the wilderness which i do quite a bit and it goes onto my belt as part of my edc it becomes my edc when i go into the wilderness this is its own separate kit i've done a whole episode on it it's got the basics of like a headlamp water purification an emergency bivy sack good compass things like that so that goes in here this when it's not on my belt it goes onto the baby bug out bag 
I also should mention, that's my audio over there for the podcast that you guys saw. So I should mention that this is part of a system and part of my EDC, it doesn't replace my EDC. This is, except for changing into a clean shirt before this video, pretty much what I've been wearing all day going into town. I've got my EDC gun. I've got my EDC knife, a fixed blade. You know, if you listen, I'm big on carrying a fixed blade EDC knife. So there is that. I've got my extra magazine, my tourniquet, and that all conceals pretty well under a jacket. That being said, let's get into the baby bug out bag. And I'm pretty much just going to go through this thing and show you what's in there. First off, let's go around the outside. So duct tape, right? Nothing super tactical there, but good duct tape. It gets used a lot, as you can see, partial roll left. It's just carabinered onto one of the pockets. Also, I have a little fire starter there right on the outside. One of the little toggle ones I've talked to you guys about fits on there. It also is bright orange, so it helps me grab and, and open things pretty quick. This, although not super tactical looking, may be one of the most used and important things on the kit. It's a universal charger. It's got my iPhone charger. It's got mini USB and whatever the other ones are called. So you can use it to charge all kinds of things. My EDC flashlight is mini USB rechargeable. And a lot of times, let's be honest, we either our cable just goes out on us or for whatever reason we forgot our cable, you're going to a buddy's house, you know, you're somewhere where you don't have your charging cable, this pretty much stays in there. It's a good, useful piece of kit. So that's what's on the outside there. Let's go to the top pocket. Inside the top pocket, a roll, and I use this stuff so it's been used, but the better part of a roll of micro cord, I'm big on that if you guys have listened. A small thing of RAND CLP for gun lubrication and triple antibiotic ointment, pretty important. This stuff is super useful for a lot of things when you don't want duct tape, but it's like the hockey grip tape, athletic tape, whatever you want to call it comes in useful for a lot of things. Again, this is my day-to-day -day bag. I use it all the time. So for at the gym, when I rip my hand open or something like that, for a number of reasons, that tape is super handy. A pair of earplugs and a pair of gloves. That's just what's in that pocket. I'm not dressing this thing up for you guys. This is how it is. Part of the reason I'm doing this is because this bag is filthy. It needs to get washed. And I thought it's a good time to go through this. So Around the front pocket, knife sharpener, a thing of hooks with a wet fly in there for fishing. And then, I don't know if you can truly have any kind of bug out bag without aviators. Aviators, super important. I don't know if you can bug out without aviators. It might be a rule if you've ever seen, you know, Book of Eli. So, which are these uh, anti-diarrheals? I've never had to use them, thankfully, but apparently diarrhea is a major cause of you know, dying in, from disease and things like that. So I keep that in there. That's a bullion cube. It's camo, so it's super tactical. <laughs> it's actually camo, so it doesn't bust apart and get everywhere in my bag. I've had that happen before. But it's a bullion cube, mostly for the salt and the electrolytes, or if I'm out and I kill something and I want to cook it and I want a little bit of flavor in there. That's what's in the two top pockets. There's also a pocket in the back here. Water container. It goes as part of my Sawyer, which I have. Emergency bivy blanket. And then another emergency poncho. So you could use those in conjunction with each other. But emergency ponchos, I'll be honest, I'm probably not ripping into this day to day because it's just not useful for that. But this is, if I get stuck out, I'm in the Pacific Northwest, as you can probably see. If I get stuck out in the training, I use one of these and it's a dollar or with inflation, maybe a dollar fifty. And next time I go to Walmart, I buy one or two more. And it's not a big deal. It's there if it busts out raining in my car. Something happens, I got to work on it. Or I'm just out in the woods and it starts raining. So I got the poncho. Super tactical Rhodesian brushstroke camo net gaiter. I'm big on these. I do have a couple that are open. I keep this one in here so it stays clean. But these are good for all kinds of things. Obviously for your neck when I was in the desert. Super useful for putting in the water when it's hot. And putting on your neck to stay cool at a rain session. They're also good for staying warm if you're cold. Obviously not if they're wet, but they're good for a lot of things. 100% polyester, net gaiters. Was rocking those long before COVID made them cool. But there is that. What else is in there? That is just a cap. 
that is more gun lubricant that is in there. This is really useful. I see left out of a lot of these kind of kits. It's a spare wallet. It's got a spare ID in it. It has a spare copy of a concealed weapons license in it. It has a it has cash in it. And that's basically all it has in it. But you know, a spare form of ID, there's been plenty of times where I've gone out and I've forgotten my wallet, but this generally is where I am, so at least I have a spare. You know, it might be a photocopy, but it's better than nothing to prove who I am. Anyway, there is that. Uh, I probably should lay this stuff on the table. And this is the knife that stays on here. This is a fixed blade knife. This is a Topps Iraq Jack. It is a really good knife. It is a small but very sturdy fixed blade EDC. For a while, I was running a K-Bar in here, but it was just too big. But that is the Topps. Iraq jacket is a good it is a good fixed blade knife that's not too heavy. So we got that. You see how I got it attached there? So when I got it when I have it slung, I can grab it from any direction if it's in there. I can reach out and grab it if I have to get somebody off me to get to my gun or whatever. That's the way it's oriented. And that being said, that may look pretty overt, but if I just unclip that and slip it down in there, it actually slides down into this pocket. And just the handle sticks out and you probably wouldn't know what it was just looking at it you would just see the end of that handle sticking up i've been through a number of iterations of knife on this pack over the years as you can tell this this pack's been around a few years so that's what i have on there now i've i used that and i got away from it and i went back to it so that's probably the one that's going to stay on there unless i find something better but it's a good knife it's very sturdy um, it's a good knife for that it's a good balance of size and utility I have, you know, butchered a deer with it. I know it works, it's sharp. And what else do we have here? Just trying to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. There's nothing on here now, but I usually will clip my car key or something onto that. That's pretty useful. I like that. This patch, you may have noticed, not only does it have a Bible verse on it, but I've talked about this before in a tactical tip. I have some Spectra, which is super strong twine on there. I've got that with a needle already on it and a fish hook. So that's behind the patch. So I could actually use that patch for its intended purpose if I rip my clothes or something like that or to patch up this bag if it breaks. That's super sturdy, super strong line. So if the strap breaks or something, I can fix it and it's right there. I don't have to go digging for it. Make sure that's everything from these pockets. Now let's open it up. Let's start in here. Twine. This is good twine. I have actually used this exact twine for snaring birds and eating them so I know that it works not just conjecture it actually does work this is just cheap kite line but it's good twine it's good when you don't want to use expensive or big bulky 550 cord it's on a spool which is super handy i unroll some i clip it back in there and cut it off it don't have to never get tangled up or anything like that so that's super useful so we got that bug repellent wipes again i'm in the pacific northwest as you can see so comes in pretty handy just a regular old lighter with duct tape on it so we have that. That is in that front little pocket right there. This is a hexamine stove for cooking, for making fire, for things like that. It's got the hexamine tablets in there. I think I, it's one down, but it's still got quite a few in there. Starting a fire in a really wet, cold environment can be an issue. So that hexamine stove is really nice to have. 550 cord with micro cord wrapped around it. So we got that going for us. On this little lanyard so it doesn't fall off and get lost, I have one of those micro can openers. I have a whistle and I have a gold ring. I also have water purification tablets, mostly full. I'm sure that I use them quite a bit, but they're in there. This next piece of gear, super important. This is a Bushnell Backtrack, and this is basically a light handy GPS. It doesn't work like a normal GPS. It has a compass on it, but you don't generally use it for nav, you use it for if you get lost. What it does is when you get out of your car, you turn it on, you mark your location, or you get to camp, you mark your location, and it should, if you get signal, orient you back to where you're going. So it'll always give you an arrow and point you back to the direction of travel to get back to camp or back where you're going. I have used that several times when I've gotten lost in the woods in the wilderness, which does happen if you spend time out there. At least it does to me. Put that back on because I'm chilly but there's that this is just metal wire good for making snares for something larger than a bird something that has teeth 
Good for all kinds of tasks where something might get super hot and you can't use string. Good for all kinds of things. As you can tell, it's it's been used before as a lot of the stuff in this pack has. What is else? So the other outside pouch, we have these socks and these socks, two pair of socks. These are dress socks if you don't know. Dress socks come in really handy if you're hiking long distances, really tight nylon dress socks are really nice. We use those in the Marine Corps wearing two sets of socks. These are a backup pair of my basic everyday socks. So got extra socks. If you don't have extra socks, even in your small kit, and you have a bunch of tactical stuff, you're probably doing it wrong. If you ever travel long distances on foot, you'll know that you need that. This is more fire starting materials. This is basically my little fire starting bag. It has magnesium, it has water purification tablets, and it has some more of the hexamine in there. So that's basically my go-to fire starting stuff. It's right in the side pouch so I can grab it. Tactical toothbrush. But seriously, toothbrushes are super important. You know, you don't want a tooth problem. Also, if you just use this bag to like stay at your buddy's house or for a business trip or something and you forget your normal, you know, kit for with your toothbrush, always have an extra toothbrush. It weighs almost nothing. So you got that Sawyer Mini. It stays in there with the fire kit. So we have that. That's my go-to filter. I like it better than the Life Straw. I've got my bag here, as you saw, so I can have multiple ways to get water and carry water. So I have that. I'm not going to take it out. Oh, this is right beside the fire kit. This is a beefy not like one of the little gimmicky ones at Walmart, but a big beefy magnesium rod and ferrocium rod. So I don't know if it'll show up well on camera, but right. So you got that fire kit and I'm not going to take it out because it's a pain to get back in, but I have a metal cup in there and I don't want to take five minutes to slowly get that out of there. But there's a metal cup in there for boiling water, cooking in things like that. What are my other side pockets? Monocular. Nothing super fancy. It's a Tasco. They make a lot better brands. I have much better binoculars. But for a mini kit like this, it's light, it's handy. And it might save me a lot of walking if I look at a route and decide that's not the way I want to go. So we've got that. I'm going to use this pack all the time. I hunt quite a bit, so I have a hunting call in there. It just happens to be in there. Again, I didn't stage this video. Quest bar super important you get hungry again i use this bag all the time there should probably be more than that in there but that's the only one left in there blue thread for tassels and then we have a backup belt which is important can have a lot of functions can be utility strap can be a tourniquet not great for that i carry an edc tourniquet but an extra backup belt is really important if you carry guns and stuff on your body you don't want to be without a belt this is an old backup Marine Corps belt. Uh, let's see. I have just, this is fire cord. So whenever I cut little pieces off, I just throw it in here because it has wicks inside for starting fire. I normally wouldn't keep a piece of paracord that small. There is a super small brush. That's not for teeth. That's for gun cleaning. Super small. It's in there. So I've got that. And then... Probably neglected in a lot of kits, a sewing kit, right? A micro sewing kit. Sometimes you gotta sew stuff. I sewed stuff up yesterday. I use stuff hard, I break it. We've got that. And then we have a surgical scalpel. It's actually not like a surgical scalpel, it's so much bigger than that. It's from the one you exchange a blade kind of knives. I think that one's from an outdoor edge. I have a bunch of them, so I usually will throw one in a lot of different kits just in case I want a super sharp and clean blade. And then multi-tool. This is a Leatherman something. It's the one made for kids, but I really like it because it locks. When you put the blade out, it locks the blade in place. I really like that. A lot of other, you know, utility blades and stuff like that, they don't lock, which I've been cutting stuff before and cut my fingers really bad because it folded over. Anyway, locking blade. It's the Leatherman, don't know the model. There is that, a gun cleaning, or a pistol cleaning rod rather, it stays in that pouch. A really good orienteering compass, so got that in there.
Oh, and a file. File super important. It's a way to sharpen a knife if I need it. Comes in handy for a lot of other things, urban survival, escape and evasion, things like that. But it's just a small, handy file. This one's a triangle one. I find it very useful, multifunctional. It's a little bit rusty, a little bit worn. I do use it. Gets used quite a bit, actually. But you can sharpen anything from an axe to a knife with it if you need to. So we have that. What else is in here? Another smaller surgical scalpel. And lock picks. You can see how light and handy those are. There's four of them there. The four real commonly used ones. I don't find that I generally use more than that. Would it be nice to have an entire kit? It would, but it would be big and bulky. Generally, one, maybe two picks is all that I use, and then a tensioner. But we have that right there. You can see how small and handy that is. That's in that pocket. Make sure I didn't forget anything there. Okay, so... Maybe the moment you've all been waiting for. The main pocket. The tactical stuff. First off, this is a pocket. It's bare independent. He makes really good medical kits. Also like other stuff that he does. I appreciate you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you do, I also support Bear on Patreon. I'm a patron. Uh, long time fan of his. Anyway, this is a pocket. It fits in there real nice. It's a medical kit. I'm not going to get into the contents of that. I'm sure he has a video on what's inside here. Emergency rations. I duct tape them because I know from experience, if you don't, the edges tend to get worn and they get opened. They don't last as long. But that's rations, 2,400 calories. So we have that in there. Oh, and look at that. I am prepared. I have another quest bar. That's awesome. Inflation, though, is probably worth more than when I bought them. Good investment. Uh, so we got that. And you're probably all wanting to see what is in here. It wouldn't make sense to take the mag out before the gun. But I have in here my kind of go-to, if I had to bug out and I had to bail out and only grab the bag, I've got this in there. Also, I carry a full-size gun day-to-day, -day, as you guys saw, but I don't always. You know, if, I'm, if the weather's warmer and I'm in a pair of shorts and a tank top or whatever, you know, going to do wind sprints, going to work out, I may not have a full-size gun. Uh, in general, I'll have a small snub nose 357 if I'm doing that, and a small knife if I'm doing wind sprints or something, or going running with the dog. I won't have a full size gun. So, this is my backup full size gun. It's, it's a good gun. It is in a Bianca UM84. I like this holster for two reasons. One, it's a good soft case, so it, it covers everything up to stop it from getting dirty. This bag is fairly dirty, the gun is not. That says something, but it's a good enclosed holster. If you don't know, these also have a built-in cleaning rod in the top. That's what that little ridge is for. Really good, well thought out design. Also, this doubles as a, a decent holster, right? So I could carry it as a flap holster if it's raining and nasty out. I can just put it on my belt. It could just go literally. Now, I wouldn't carry it in front like this, but I just want to show you. I could literally put it on the side of my belt, clip it in, and then I have an actual holster. So it's a... It's a way to keep the gun clean when it's in the bag, and it's an emergency holster if I need it. So we have that. Also, I can just take this part off. It does detach, and then it's a much quicker retention holster. The gun in here is going to be a Beretta 92 Wilson Combat. So I assume it's hot, so I'm gonna be careful there. We've got that. Okay, so this is a Beretta 92 Wilson Combat. Okay, so that is my big go-to full-size fighting handgun that stays in the kit that I've talked to you guys about before. You know, having a good full-size fighting handgun in your little mini bag here. So that is the one that stays in there. Also in there, a spare magazine for it. This also is an attachment, which really doesn't apply to most people, but... The go-to holster that's on my war belt, it's a universal holster, and it'll take any gun with a rail that you have this attachment on. So I could put it on that. I could put it on my EDC gun. If I decide I don't want to be covert and I want to be overt and grab the war belt, it works with that system. It all locks in together. So, And that war belt I actually used as a professional. So I know that it's all set up the way that I like it and the way I'm familiar with. Anyway, any gun with a rail will fit into that holster. 
and it locks on to this so I need this piece so that stays in that bag so that gun or the gun that I'm carrying if I want to go to this system will work so I have that this super handy this is a backup power system for my cell phone you know this really saved me this and that little charging cable that I took off in the beginning got so much stuff on the table I can't even see it but when I had it in my bug out actual, if you guys don't know, if you don't listen, I actually bugged out because of the wildfires were right next to where we were in Arizona. We actually got evacuated and had to leave in, in quite a hurry. And when I left, of course, that was the day that my charging cable in the vehicle took a crap. So it didn't work. But thankfully, by the grace of God, I had this in there, which is charged. I should call myself out and check. Yep, it's still got three quarters of a charge. And it's got a, another charging cable. I learned my lesson that day. It's got a brand new charging cable duct tape to it. In addition to the cable that I normally use. But, you know, unless it's like EMP, end of the world, then you're probably going to have power and you're probably going to use your cell phone. And having backup power and a backup cord is important. This probably, well, not probably. This is the most important thing in the kit. If you don't have your EDC Bible with you, you always have a backup Bible, and not just one of the little New Testaments, but an entire Old and New Testament. This is about as small as I can find an entire Old and New Testament Bible. But there is that. Very important. We've got that, and I just want to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, I still left it clipped on. So... I think that is it without going into the little small EDC upgrade kit that I have there. And again, that's part of a system that goes in conjunction with my war belt, that goes in conjunction briefly with my baby bug out bag. This is a bandolier that comes off. This rides generally behind the front seat of the Hummer. So it stays clipped on the back of the seat so it stays in place and vertical. So we have that, it's got a swing on it, the bandolier is wrapped on there. It wouldn't be such a mess if I just didn't throw it over here, but bandolier with mags. You guys will probably ask. I'm not gonna go through the entire contents of this bag today, but this works in conjunction. So this is not like my one bag. It goes in conjunction. If I have to grab it in a hurry, which is the idea of that bag, I sling that in the front and I just sling this rucksack on my back, right? I just throw this on my back and that one stays on my front. And then if I have time, I will stop and I'll put it inside this bag. It's not that big. It will fit inside here, it'll clip over. So there's that. I keep hopefully what stays legal, a AR pistol in there, ready to go, sling attached to it. I got my bandolier with my extra mags. I have extra pair of shoes. Don't neglect that. You know, I generally wear day-to-day -day shoes that I could bug out in, but whether you do or don't, you should have a spare pair. A lot of times in a packing list, like when I was in the Marine Corps, you know, on the packing list, there'll be a spare set of boots in your pack. That's for a reason. You, you know, in order to be able to fight with your hands, your feet have to get you there. And for that, you need to take care of your feet. You'll notice I have two pair of socks in that bag. I don't even remember how many pairs of socks I have in this bag. Extra pair of shoes. Um, I have been a professional hunter and trapper. I do have like snare wire and stuff on here. More legit, substantial snare wire that I know works for bigger animals. I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, the idea is not to go into that bag too much, but this supplements that. So if you're like, oh, you don't have this in there, simmer down, it might be in there. Also, the AR pistol is not my go-to like apocalypse long gun. You may have noticed on the table. This is my scabbard. A lot of times if I'm just going reconnoitering out in the wilderness and I don't know what I'm gonna kill, Shotgun's the best tool for that. It's got two straps on this. I'll throw this on or I'll throw it in the canoe or whatever. This is a scabbard. It's a really good one. It's a Mossberg 590S. Got extra ammo in both containers, extra ammo in the side saddle. Anyway, it's a cool gun. It's a good gun. And the 12 gauge shotgun, whether this one or my Benelli, would be my go to. So if things were that bad and I had to ditch everything and take what I could carry, I'd probably leave the AR. I know that's blasphemy to a lot of you guys, but I would probably put this on my pack. I can, anyway, I've been in the Marine Corps and in the Army. I was also LAPD. I've been in some pretty nasty situations. But as I like to say, I can count on both hands the number of nasty situations like that where I've needed a gun and have fingers left over. 
I can't recall the amount of times I've had to eat. And if I have to eat, the shotgun is the best tool for that. I can take anything from a morning dove to an elk to a bear or anything like that. So that's why the shotgun would be on there. And this scabbard is Molly compatible. So this would just get clipped onto my bigger bag and ride. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed on the Eberly stock, I've been running these packs a long time. This is the gun runner pack. It has a scabbard back there. So I could just take this out and throw my shotgun in there or I could attach it to the side, whatever I want to do. These are really good packs, really good hunting packs. That one's fairly new. I had an old one for a long time. I kind of wore it out, but it's a good pack. Not really the idea behind this episode though. So hopefully that has given you a good visualization of the baby bug out bag, bail out bag concept and what is in mine. So I hope that helped give you some ideas of things you may or may not want in your bag, things that do or don't apply to you. It's a system I've been using and refining over years and years and years. As you can tell, I've had this bag a long time. I'd be a bad capitalist if I did not mention that I sell beginner kits, not everything in here. Obviously, I couldn't ship that. It'd probably be illegal. But I do sell starter kits with very similar bags designed to hold guns in them with a few essential things like a good fixed blade knife and things like that. You can check that out. Good Shepherd Training, goodshepherdtraining.com. That's not hard to remember. If you want to become a patron, you like what you see, you want to support it, goodshepherdtraining.com. Tactical verse of the day. Let's do... Psalm 144. Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Thanks guys. Have a blessed day.